Uh, just cut the uh, thermostat off, the Variac. Uh, it's kind of hard to see with all the foaming here, but uh, I think we'll go ahead and stop it at this point. Uh, and if I lower this down, it does look like we've got a fair amount of material left that we've received in the uh, receiving class. I'm gonna let this cool down. And once it's cooled down, temperature was hovering around about 68 to 70. Uh, really didn't get much above 70. Our goal was to collect anything that was below 90. So um, we're all set with that. Once this cools, I'll disconnect this. I'll transfer the material inside this receiving flask to an Erlenmeyer flask. We'll add some potassium carbonate to that. But, and this potassium carbonate is anhydrous and it's going to serve two purposes. One, if any water did come over with our cyclohexane, that will help pick it up. The other thing is, if there happens to be any trace amounts of acid contained also, the potassium carbonate will help neutralize that as well. Just remove the receiving flask from the uh, fractional distillation apparatus. What I'm going to do, I've wiped off the bottom because I don't want to add any moisture to this. Remember always to wipe out the grease on the inside. So what I'm going to do is pour this into a, a small Erlenmeyer flask. And then to that, I'm going to add some of the potassium carbonate, which is anhydrous. But I'm going to add that um, just like we've done before. Swirl that around. If it clumps up, which this one did, I'm going to add some more. That tells me there's some moisture present. We typically want to add enough until there's no more clumping. I'm still seeing clumping occur. Now there's some that is, yeah, it looks a little bit more. There we go. So I think that's probably enough. I'm going to stop for that with some paper towel and then we'll come back and take a look at that in about 10, 15 minutes. It's been 10 minutes uh, since uh, what we collected in the receiving class has been interacting with the potassium carbonate. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and filter this through a cotton plug. I've already weighed this flask. The mass of that flask is 27.327 grams. Once I transfer this through the cotton plug, I'll weigh that again and let you know what that weight is. Once you have that weight, then you, you'll have to calculate your theoretical yield and your percent yield. Uh, so anytime we're doing a synthesis reaction, you really need to calculate what that percent yield, not percent recovery, but percent yield. Okay, so all that's been transferred. I'm going to go weigh this and I'll be right back. Now the next thing we're going to do is to take a look at some chemical tests. And what the chemical test is going to tell us is whether or not we were successful in dehydrating cyclohexanol to form cyclohexane. And the chemical test that we're going to use, we're going to use bromine. We're going to use a uh, potassium permanganate test. The bromine test, um, the solution of that is an orange color. If we add a drop of that to our sample, and if that orange color disappears, then that's evidence that we had a carbon-carbon double bond. Uh, for the potassium permanganate, we're looking for a purple color that is the initial color of the potassium permanganate solution. If we add something that contains multiple bonds, carbon-carbon multiple bonds, then that purple color will disappear and we should see a brownish precipitate. For the bromine test, I'm just going to add a few drops of my sample to a test tube. And I want to put some of the bromine 
in a separate test tube just so that you know what color it looks like initially. And one thing about the bromine is that you should always use the bromine under the fume hood. Never open that out. So this is the color of the bromine with nothing added to it. Here is my sample. I've got a few, several drops of my sample there. So if I add one drop of the bromine solution, or two, I added three actually, and shake that, notice that that orange color disappeared. So if the orange color disappears, that's a positive test for the presence of a carbon-carbon multiple bond. I'm saying multiple bond because triple bonds also can react with bromine, but in this case, the only possible multiple bond we could form would have been a carbon-carbon double bond. So we know we've got a carbon-carbon double bond from the bromine test. The next thing I'm gonna do is to take a look at the potassium permanganate test I'm going to make of the control solution, just like I did for the bromine. We usually put in, oh, about two mils of acetone to a test tube. I may not do that just for the control. I'm not really going to measure that out. And I'm going to add a drop of the potassium permanganate solution to that. So that you see what that solution looks like and it has that nice purple color associated with it. So I'm now going to prepare my sample to be testing. Put about two mils, that's close to one to two mils of the sample or the acetone. That's going to serve as my solvent. Then I'm going to take uh, a drop, two or three drops of my sample place in there, swirl that up. I'm just dissolving my cyclohexane or my product into the acetone and then I'm going to add my potassium permanganate solution. One to two drops is usually sufficient. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Let me add one more drop to that. And then I'm going to go back and add a couple more drops of my sample to that to make sure that it did run down the let that sit for a minute or two maybe not quite that long I think you can see by looking there is a difference in the color of the test tubes notice that the pure potassium permanganate if nothing's happened to it has that purple color you can certainly see that we've got a change here it almost looks like there's something like a dark ring near the top and that could be some of our precipitate that's trying to form down just gonna let that sit maybe for half a minute to see if there's any other changes that are occurring there. And then um, we'll make that final conclusion. Definitely there is a change. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer for it to happen than others. Just give it about a half a minute. We'll come back and take a look at that, see if there is any change. Um, just wanna go back and take a look. The one on this side is the potassium permanganate with nothing in it other than the solvent. This is our sample that was dissolved in the solvent and then potassium permanganate. As you can see, there is a, a visual change that's happened there. Notice the purple color has disappeared into a different kind of a, um, almost brownish pink color, if you will. So that is indicative of a positive test for a carbon-carbon double bond. Now, I just wanna stress this fact that when we do chemical tests, I'm not saying that this sample is 100% pure. All we're doing is to verify, did we complete what we wanted to do? And our goal for today was to take cyclohexanol 
let that undergo an elimination reaction, dehydration specifically, to remove water and alpha beta elimination so that we could form that carbon-carbon double bond. Since cyclopexanol has two alpha carbons that are identical, we should only have one carbon-carbon double bond formed in a molecule. There's no different isomer that's possible. There's only one carbon-carbon double bond that could be formed in that molecule. So all we've done through these chemical tests is to say yes, by the bromine and by the potassium permanganate, we have succeeded in making the cyclohexane. In order for us to tell if this is 100% pure, probably ideal would be good to either do a gas chromatography to see if it was only one component that was present, or we could go through and do a simple distillation and collect only at the temperatures at which cyclohexane boils. As you can see, we don't have very much left to use, so uh, we're not going to go through and uh, decide how pure that sample is. We just know that we got the product we wanted to make. And then, again, cleaning up any type of drying agent, uh, pour that on paper towel, let it evaporate, put that in the appropriate waste containers. There's a waste containers for these different chemical tests, um, for our steel pot that we use for the distillation. Whatever we have left in it, we want to dilute that with water and neutralize that before we get rid of it. And then just to make sure you clean up all the glassware, especially can't stress enough that when you're uh, separating the glassware for the fractional distillation or any type of organic experiment, make sure you take the time to wipe out the grease in those joints. Uh, you'll be glad that you did because if you don't, that grease will just contaminate everything inside and outside.